Hey, what up, world? It's Atomic of Atomic One Nation, and uh, we're about to play some games. This one is called Mystic Destinies, Serendipity of Aeons, as you can see from the screen, and I have not played it yet. So, we are about to embark upon a journey together. Let's get started. The music is pretty cool. I have it down kind of low, so I don't know if you can hear it, because I'm not sure how the volume's picking up, but... Over time, we'll get better at doing this. So, so let's start the game. Enter first name. Subasa. Um, okay. You want to let me enter the name? Oh, there we go. My bad. I wasn't typing. Okay. So... Like I say, I'm Atomic, so let's put that in there. And, uh, save, skip, forward, menu. No, enter, la oh, enter last name. Alright, well, okay, here. Let's delete that. And we can do, there we go. Alright, so, let's play. Yeah, of course I'm happy with Atomic One Nation. That's the name. Today, my first year undergraduate studies begins at Hagawara University. By the way, I'm not using the video because I look kind of stupid still without my teeth. So if I sound funny, yeah, you know. I'm getting those work done. Anyway, today, my first year of undergraduate studies begins at Hagawara University. Hmm. That sounds oddly like Hogwarts. I made sure to get here early so I could make it on time to my first lecture. That was probably pretty smart of her. But somehow I managed to get horribly lost. That happens on your first day. I'd climb the stairs to look for my classroom on the second floor but couldn't find it. Poor her. I turned to go back down still reading the map. Damn, school's big enough you need a map. Hey! She's exclaiming, silently. Suddenly, I collided into something, or rather, someone. It's a boy! Whoa! Is what she says, which is kind of an odd reaction. Oh, that's right, she did just fall. I lose my balance and throw out my arms to catch myself. My things fly out of my hands, scattering all over the steps. But the guy I ran into puts out his arms to catch me before I fall for it. Oh, this is going to be fun to read, I can tell. <laughs> Over his shoulder, I can see the contents of my bag that have been upended. I click my tongue and try to move to gather them. Does that sound something like... I think it does. But then I realize the guy still has his arm around my waist. <laughs> Uh, like I said, fun to read for me. I pull back to look at him and our eyes meet. Are you okay? Yeah, thanks for catching me. Oh, hey, that's me. I feel a little bit better about this interaction. Yeah, thanks for catching me, but could you let me go now? Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, wait, that's not me. That's, I'm the girl. Okay. Well, the girl's oddly named. Whatever. He lets go of my waist hastily and takes a small step back. Here, let me pick those up for you. He bends down to gather my things before they get stepped on by the passerby. Well, that's good, I guess, but it doesn't look like there's any passerby. But then again, I don't see you guys in the staircase. I'm Shao. He picks up my map and looks at it before handing everything to me. Is this your first year here? Let's get through this. Yeah? Then welcome. Uh, it's my second year here myself. He taps a line on my class schedule. Because he's obviously knowledgeable. If you were looking for this, you just passed it. It's back down the hall on the left. Oh! Thanks! Yeah, I'll have to give her a more feminine voice from now on. I've barely taken the paper back before Shao grabs my wrist to look at my watch. 
Oh crap, I just realized my next class is on the other side of the campus. I got a jet, see ya! Before I fully realize what's happening, Shao has turned around and is sprinting away. I kind of sound like I'm from Aladdin or something like that, but whatever. What was that all about? But since I'm about to be late for class, I don't have much time to wonder. Pushing Shao out of my mind, I start running toward class myself. Oh, looks like we made it to class. After a morning of classes, it's finally lunchtime. We didn't even go to class. I didn't see a class. I'm at the counter, paying for my food, or at least I'm supposed to be. When I reach in my bag, I grope around for my wallet, but I can't find it. Oh no. The cashier stares at me, wholly unimpressed with my lack of preparation. Uh, she got kind of manly for a second. Oh no! Don't tell me I lost it. I'm starting to panic when a black leather wallet is thrust in front of my face. Is this yours? I'm not actually sure at first until I see the small, star-shaped charm hanging off of it. I feel immense relief as I take the wallet. Oh good, that's a relief. I was looking everywhere for you. Thank you. I thought I'd lost it for good. Is there anything... Don't worry about it. You're cute enough that it's payment enough for me if you smile. Ooh, he's smooth. She's surprised. Probably a little taken aback. I bet you that she's impressed. He looks expectant enough that I managed to pull my lips into some semblance of a smile. See, she smiled. Or we smiled, or whatever. Looking strangely satisfied, he points to the annoyed cashier before hopping over the line's railing. Completely flustered, I shake my head to clear it. I quickly turn around to pay for my food and take my tray to head outside. I've been cooped up all day. I need some fresh air. I step outside into sunshine as a chilly breeze passes right through me. Ooh, it must have been a ghost. I shiver involuntarily, but it feels refreshing. Well, that's a little weird. All right. Thankfully, it also means that there's hardly anyone outside. I sit on a bench on the grass and relax as I admire the campus's scenery. Just check out the campus. But then I hear a voice nearby. I slowly stop chewing and look around to identify the voice. Oh, come on, don't be ridiculous. There's no way that actually happened. The male's voice is laughing and energetic, yet I see no one around. It sounds like someone talking on the phone. Whatever it is, it's kind of annoying. Someone moves into view near the flowers. They seem to be looking at nothing in particular. Ha ha ha! Fine, fine! I believe you! I think that's a guy. Yeah, that's a dude. You don't have to look so annoyed. I'm trying to give him different voices, but, you know, we'll work on it. Aha! I've spotted the mystery man. I wonder what's so funny. Oh, there goes his ring. Startled by the sudden sound of a phone ringing, I nearly choke on my food. Huh? I slowly, almost fearfully look over at the guy I thought was talking on the phone. Why are you fearfully looking at him? And see him pull one out of his pocket. He checks it, then puts it away. All while happily talking to nothing. I'm pondering what just happened when I notice that the man is looking at me. Surprise! Oh! Maybe you should brush up on your spying skills if you want to listen in on people. I quickly turn back around. Okay. It seems easy enough. Work on your spying skills. Jeez. 
I try to ignore the weird guy and manage to finish eating my lunch in relative peace. When I get to my apartment, I open up my laptop. I want to sign up for that business club I heard about before tomorrow. Ooh, she's getting prepared. My phone vibrates. Before I can do much, though, I take it out and realize that there's a rare email from my mother. Are you not close with your mother? Uh, primary, Saturday, Chihiro Shinomira, uh, Shinomira, something like that. How was your first week of school? Is everything going well? You left your laptop charger here. I'll be home at Saturday. I'll be at, at I'll be at home Saturday. One of these days I'll learn to read. So could you come get it then? I'd like to take you out to a nice restaurant to celebrate your first week. Mom. Oh, of course. I left something important at home. And I was trying to be so careful about everything. The end of the email was a bit strange, though. She never really been the type to celebrate things. Regardless of my thoughts, I type a reply that I'll be there on Saturday. But the strange feeling the email gave me never goes away. The next day I managed to get through classes without getting lost. Well, that's good for her. At least she's learning the place. I've finished classes for today, and I'm headed to the first meeting of the business club. I don't care about the business club. Let's get to the magic. Room 129. There it is. And apparently she was finding it all right. I push the door open. As soon as I do, a black-haired man turns to face me. Welcome to the... Oh, that's a dude, so... Welcome to the... Yeah, because I fixed it halfway, but, you know. He stops me... Oh. He stops me mid-sentence and stares at me. That was us, her, whatever. I'm struck and silent for an entirely different reason. The man has striking aqua-colored eyes. His eyes are weirdly colored. Ah! Surprise! We stare at each other for a few moments before voice from behind me interrupts. Hey, come on, let me in. Is that the same voice I used before? I don't know, I probably won't remember them. I'll make up new ones as I go. Flustered, I hurry to move out of the way and step into the classroom. As the man goes by, I recognize his distinctive hair. Oh, it's that weird guy who is talking to himself. I glance at the black-haired man again, but he's turned away from me. I turn to face the class and lock eyes with a young-looking guy in yellow. Is that the guy from the cafeteria? He gives me a big smile that strikes me as suddenly familiar. Weird. I feel like I know him from somewhere. He lifts his legs up and jumps to his feet in one fluid movement. <laughs> Then he turns to the newcomer. Hey, Shinji, I came here to talk to you. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. I'll lend you the book for next week, Takumi. Huh? It's not about the book. It's... Mystery voice, so... Excuse me, please don't block the hallway. We don't know if it's male or female yet. I hear an irritated voice behind me. I turn to look equally irritated at its rudeness. Apparently it's a male. Apparently only dudes go to this school besides her. Or us, or whatever. Ah! Huh? Love at first sight already, Tatsuya. Oh, these names are going to be fun, too. Sh shut up, Shinji. I immediately move away from the door and go to sit down. A few mo moments after I do, someone starts yelling. No! The peaches are running away! Um, okay. Question surprise? Ah? Uh? I look over to where I heard the voice and see a guy in a bright orange hoodie sleeping on the couch. Is that... I think it was Xiao. I think it was Xiao? I don't know, however that's phrased. 
What the hell? Why is he here? Ooh, Cat Soya doesn't like him. I'm not really sure. Surfer dude over here, Shinji. He did stay up pretty late practicing for a party just got, though. Seems like he knows that he's not supposed to be there. So I guess napping? I think he said something about wanting to join the club. Whatever, let's just start the meeting. Thanks for watching the club for me, Professor Kazama. Tetsuya turns around, but the professor is gone. How did he slip out without anyone noticing? But no one else seems to think it's all that strange. The meeting commences without any further weirdness, though I'm surprised at how small it is. Since it seems like we have some new members this year, maybe we should start this meeting by introducing ourselves. I'm Tatsuya Yakumura, the club president in a third year. Oh, special. I'm Shinji Hirayama, a third year. Special. I've been a member of this club for a long time. Though I think everyone here probably already knows me, I'm Takumi Arai, or Taku for short. Taco! It's my first year here, but I'm not actually even a part of this club. <laughs> really? Why are you here? I raised an eyebrow at Takuma's introduction. So why is he even here? See, she's wondering too. I look at Xiao, oops. And Tatsuya kicks the couch. Xiao startles awake. Huh? Where am I? At that business uh at that business club you were talking about joining. I forgot he's our surfer dude, Shinji. Huh? Oh, oh. Eh, some of these voices are gonna sound the same. Screw it. We're doing introductions, and it's your turn. Oh, alright. I'm Shao Hattori, a second year. I just joined the club. My acting teacher told me if I want to become an actor, it's good to get some understanding with how business works. So here I am. Well, that was smart of him. Everyone looks at me expectantly, and I stand up and slightly bow. Very respectful. Uh, I'm Atomic. One Nation. It's my first year here. Yeah, yeah, all right, fun. <laughs> it's nice to meet you all. I wish I would have known that this character was going to be a chick. Maybe I said that somewhere and I wasn't paying attention. I sit back down and Tetsuya starts going over what the purpose of this club is and the kinds of things we'll be doing in it. But every now and then, I see the purple-haired guy, Shinji, glancing at me. <sighs> What am I like? Oh, that's her. What am I like super attractive today? Wow, egotistical much? Eventually the meeting is over and I stand up and grab my bag. But Shinji walks slowly up to me like he's in a daze. He stares me in the face. You're not. What? Jeez, is there something on my face? No. Suddenly, Shinji just walks right past me. It's as if I don't exist at all. Hmm. It's Saturday, and I've gotten lost a few times. But I finally found the coffee house Mother wanted me to meet her at. Oh, we're gonna meet Mom. Yay! I spot her immediately as I enter, sitting at one of the tables by the window. Well, your mother looks just about as young as you. Mother looks as put together as ever. Oh, well, she thinks so too, apparently. I walk up to her table. She only gives me one of her inscrutable expressions. Hello, Mother. I'm sorry I'm late. I got a little lost on the way. As I take my seat, I realize she's already ordered something for me. Mother looks at me over her teacup with that usual half-smile of hers. 
Why, she always got to have that half smile. I did not wait long. Let's try and give her an older womanly voice. But I did wonder if you would be able to find this place. We're working on it. I know it is a little out of the way. Most people don't know much about this di district. I eventually figured it out. So, um, I didn't know you frequented a place like this. Mother gently places her teacup on the table. The eerie color of her eyes always makes me feel like she can see right through me. For a moment, I feel like I'm ten again, being judged to see if I'm worthy of knowledge. I don't... Eh, we're gonna have to work on that mother voice. But a very old friend of mine owns this place. I wanted to come see it at least once. Ah, oh, I can't get it right. An old friend? Now I'm curious, though. I doubt she'd actually tell me more. <laughs> oh, I see. Do you? Do you? I see. An uncomfortable silence settles upon us, as usual. Wow, you must not be close with your mom. And as usual, I start rambling. Why are you so nervous all the time? So, school has been great. I even joined a club. Oh, but how are Dad and Ko doing? Kyo? Ko? Whatever. Ko? Kyo? It's weird that I said that with... Well, I'm doing a chick voice, so whatever. Hmm. Your sister began school. She apparently made a friend. A very nice boy. And Ro... Kiro is out of the country on business this week. Having nothing else to say, the conversation quickly dies down. I look out the window as I quietly sip my tea. Lunch with mother. It's not even a bit awkward. Nope, but at least Kao has a new friend. I hold back a sigh. <laughs> Atomic, I must admit. I asked you to meet me here for a reason. There is somewhere I want to take you. I have been meaning to, to ever since we came back to Japan. Will you come with me? Will you come with me? As she extends her, sla uh, her hand outwards menacingly. And we don't know whether or not to follow along. Ah! Surprise. She seems sad. It's utterly strange to see my always controlled mother let any emotion slip. I'm left speechless, but I can't hide the curiosity bubbling up I inside me. Inside me. She almost never wants to share anything with me, so this has to be something huge. Of course, Mother, I'll go with you. After we finish eating, I follow, follow Mother out of the coffee house. Her high heels click against the pavement as she walks in front of me. It's just the same, even though I'm 20, I still feel like a child. Well, grow up. Always following, never catching up. Well, maybe you should leave. But maybe now she seems me as an adult. Maybe things will be different from now on. God, one of these characters. It's with these thoughts that I eagerly get into her car. I sit in the car beside my mother, looking out the window. Maybe if I ask, she'll tell me where we're going. For once? She always has weird question marks. I sigh, knowing she'll just evade the question if she doesn't want to answer it. If she wanted me to know, she would have told me, this is a really long intro. I sneak a glance at her. Uh, wait, that's a chick, older chick. Uh, 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 huh? 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 Huh. Pick one. No one cares. Her knuckles are white from how hard she's gripping the steering wheel, and there's a somber expression on her face that I can't quite place. Oh no. I think she's gonna drive her into a river. 
Singer of all people, so unsettled, makes me beyond anxious. Or a pool or something. Mother, where are you taking me? Um, mother? Oh, she seems worried. Yes? Well, where are we going? I can't keep the nervousness out of my voice, and Mother seems to pick up on it, as she usually does. There is... <clears throat> oh, damn. There is no need to concern yourself. That's better. There we go. All right. I sit back in the seat with a sigh. I knew she wasn't going to tell me, but unexpectedly, Mother keeps talking. We're going to the countryside. I will explain more when we get there, but please... Just relax and make yourself comfortable. Hey, stop ringing. Why is there someone? Please, I'm busy. That was my phone. Sorry, guys. Back to the intro game or the game intro and visual novel story thing, whatever. The countryside? I guess it might be a few hours then. I can't believe she even said that much, though. I settle in my seat for the long ride, feeling like I might have made a small breakthrough with my mother. After a very quiet car ride, we finally stopped at a house in the country. I step outside of the car in amazement. A traditional home. Whose house is this? The gentle breeze sways through the tall field, rippling through the blades of grass. It makes such a pleasant sound, and it smells so good out here that my nerves are somewhat calmed. It's beautiful out here. Yes, it is. Was that deeper? I don't know. My voice is getting, like, kind of high-pitched raspy from doing this. <laughs> so, Mother walks ahead of me with a key and unlocks the door to the house. I hesitate a moment, not wanting to go inside. The sunset is so beautiful, but I can't keep Mother waiting. Maybe I can come outside later. Regretfully, I walk into the house ahead of Mother, who follows me in and shuts the door. Wait here. I will bring you some refreshments. Why do we need refreshments? Okay. Mother leaves before I can finish the sentence. Alone in the room, I sit down at the table. I'm not sure where, where we are, but it's very peaceful out here. The sound of the door sliding open distracts me from my thoughts. Mother comes in, carrying a tray of snacks and some tea. She glides across the room and gently places the tray on the table in front of me. Now we can have our chat a little more comfortably. Thank you. Mother sits down on the other side of the table. I'm sure you're wondering what this place is and why I brought you here. Of course. For a few moments, we sit in silence. Mother seems to be thinking about how to say it. This house is built on the land my ancestors lived on hundreds of years ago. They lived and worked here. They spilled blood here. The way she says it, it sends, a faint, it sends a faint chill down my spine. I wanted to bring you here to... Uh, I wanted to bring you here to show you this place that's so full of history. There aren't many things left here from that time, but I thought you would enjoy seeing it anyway. She takes a small sip from her cup and I follow suit. A pleasant warmth washes over my body. Oh, you just been drugged. Thank you for the tea. It's very good. C can you show me around a bit? Well, I guess the stutter was wrongly placed, but whatever. <clears throat> I wonder who's saying that. I guess it's us. Uh, uh, uh. A wave of dizziness hits me like a ton of bricks. Quiet, scruff, we're doing a video game recording. As the world starts to spin, I have to physically hold on to the table. Atom- Ugh, shoot. Atomic, are you alright? Like I said, I really wish I would've known this was a female character. And, well, there's a female character here, hold up. Well, hold up. 
miss it on the screen or something? I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Oh, I don't feel well. Everything keeps spinning and my vision goes black. See, I told you you were drugged. Ah! Uh, I open my eyes. I see the moon hanging up high in the sky above me. The sky's... Wait. Huh? Where the hell am I? I try to move, but my body is completely unresponsive. What is this? What's going on? Why can't I move? Uh, uh, help me! Someone, please! I'm panicking, but I can hear someone coming closer. They're muttering under their breath. A uh, mystery voice, so let's let's deep throat that voice up already. Chick, I knew I should have used more potion. Blah. What? Did they say potion? Help me, please help. Someone sighs. It's useless to shout, you know. No one will hear you. But don't worry. This will be over soon. Uh-oh. I feel like something bad is going to happen. What? What? Who who are you? What's going on? Another sigh, then footsteps. A familiar face comes into view. Mother stands over me, her eyes glowing. Why didn't you recognize your own mother's voice? M mother What? I told you, it's going to be over soon. Oh, that was mother talking, whatever. Mother snaps her fingers. As if I was a marionette on strings, my body plays along, sitting up on its own. I can see a strange chalk circle outlined on the ground around us. Her heels click against the stone. She walks to something that looks suspiciously like an altar of some sort. Please explain, what have you done to me? Why? How? I can see her eyes dart towards me momentarily as she continues to work. Is it? It's kind of weird. This voice is getting really easy to do, by the way. She places various crystals along the chalk outline. My heart is beating impossibly fast. I try to stay as calm as I possibly can. I suppose I should explain. It's only fair. She stop. But she stops and looks at me. I am... I am many things. My true name is Shizuka. I am the last living sorceress. Well, that is a uh, statement there. A mistake rendered me cursed, unable to die. Wow, really? Okay. What? what? But how, how is that even possible? I didn't know that was something to do with sorceresses or sorcerers or whatever she's. She's a sorceress, right? Yeah, sorceress. And she's a chick, so she's a sorceress. It's not like actors and actresses where an actor applies to both. It's a sorceress. <laughs> I want to doubt her words to simply write all this way as some weird dream. But it feels real. Too real. She laughs and continues her strange pre preparations. The curse of immortality is immortal as well. Of course it would be like that. It's almost funny. It might have been an accident, but considering who he is, it makes perfect sense. Ooh, the game's starting to get interesting. Hold up. I'm going to save this because I feel like I've been playing for a little bit. Okay. For, for centuries, I have searched for a way to undo the curse. I thought it hopeless until a friend told me of a way I could finally be rid of it. Oh, so you're going to give it to her then. Mother continues to carefully place crystals in a circle around me. Damn, your mother seems kind of like a bitch, maybe. The only, way it would the only way it would work, however, is if I completed the ritual on a very specific date. And if I had someone very specific to transfer the curse onto. Wow. This mother is intense. 
With a momentary pause, she glances at me. That was us. A daughter? No, not a daughter. A homunculus, the perfect copy of my physical self. And so I created you. I am not your mother. Oh, this is shocking. I am the alchemist who made you. Ooh, even better. I love alchemy, or the thought of alchemy. Any words I could say get stuck in my throat. I feel like I'm going to pass out again. This has to be some sick joke. This can't be real. Oh, but it is. This is so real. This is all just a terrible dream. It's real. Accept it. I just need to wake up and I'll be back in my bedroom. You're not dreaming. But if this, by some insane chance, is real, there are some things I want to know. Well, shoot, even if I were in a dream, I think I would ask some questions at this point. Ooh, yes, now we finally have some interaction. Okay, cool. I'm not going to be just be reading. So let's see, we got who cursed you, isn't there any other way, what about dad? What? What about dad? Um, isn't there any other way, who cursed you? Let's go with who cursed you. Who was it? Who cursed you? Just how old are you anyway? A god. So ancient he no longer remembers his own name. That happens, you know. As for my age, I am over 700 years old. Damn, you look good for 700, or over 700. Oh, shoot, excuse me. There are a million more things I want to ask, but Shizuka carefully places the last crystal. The chalk outline suddenly glows an eerie green. But wait, stop! With a wave of her hand, my lips snap shut. Now completely paralyzed, all I can do is watch. Shizuka kneels in front of me. She takes out a small vial of some strange liquid. It looks like billions of tiny shimmering stars gently swirling together in a tiny bottle. What's with all the asses? She quickly downs it. Ugh, that tasted about as bad as I expected. Shizuka stares at me, and I can see the green of her eyes start to swirl and change into brown. I feel a sharp pain in mine at the same time. I want to scream as the pain spread from my eyes to the rest of my body. But since I can't move, all I can do is scream in my head. It hurts so much. Please make it stop. As my vision slowly darkened, I see Shizuka stand up, her eyes now completely brown. I'm sorry. I can barely hear her whisper the words. As she disappears from my vision, the world goes dark. Exciting. Exciting. I don't know. Should I continue? Yeah, let's play a little more. Uh, I grab my head that's throbbing with pain. Where am I? I'm so groggy I can scarcely remember my own name, much less what happened yesterday. I managed to force my eyes open and ease myself up into a sitting position. Holding my head still, I go back through everything I remember. I went to school. Then I met Mother for lunch on Saturday. Flashes of strange images suddenly come to mind. A strange house I didn't know my mother owned. Having tea by the setting sun. Then last... The feelings of helplessness, fear, and confusion while my mother made strange preparations under a full moon. And of course, brief but excruciating pain. I laugh nervously. <laughs> That's right, must have been a dream. I can't shake the negative feelings the dream gave me though, or my grogginess. I really have to share this. As I was just doing that, that voice, I seriously just flipped my hand in the gayest fashion ever. But <laughs> I guess I'm doing a woman's voice, so whatever, and we're playing a chick, so alright. Somehow, though, I managed to push myself out of bed. I checked my phone screen. I noticed there's an email notification from the school, but more importantly, 
crap, I have to get to school. I rushed to get dressed and grab some pain relievers before I run out the door. While waiting for a traffic light to change, I check my phone. Curious, I open the email I saw earlier. Primary, new chorus added. Hogwarts University faculty to you September 9th at 8.10 a.m. You've been added to Intro to Mystical Studies 101. Please follow the instructions to below to find your class. HU facility. Yeah, I usually get texts like that, too. What? I think back, but I don't remember requesting any such class. <laughs> Mystical Studies? Is that like religion or something? I'm, I think it would be called religious studies or, you know, something like that if it were religion studies. It says mystical studies and you just went through the craziest friggin' experience. So, what, okay, whatever, let's go. The class starts imme almost immediately after my last one of the day, so I won't have time to find out about it. I'll just go talk to the teacher and figure it out later. The light turns green, and I put my phone away. Yeah, I won't worry about all this weird stuff. I'll just keep focused on what I need to do today. Well, I'm sorry, but the weird stuff seems way more interesting than class. Despite my best efforts, my headache never went away. But all my classes are done for the day. Well, except for one. Ooh, are we going to the mystical studies? I go in the elevator and look for a ba button to the basement as the instruction said. I didn't even know this place had a basement. Well, you haven't been here for very long. Place finger over elevator buttons. Hmm. I hover my finger over nothing, feeling like an idiot. But then the air shimmers around my hand. A button appears in the empty space with a symbol indicating basement. What just happened? Okay, okay. Atomic, just stay calm. You're probably just tired and seeing things and talking to yourself, so whatever. I firmly cut off all the other thoughts for forming in my mind and press the button. I step out into a hallway that looks like something out of a fantasy movie. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure I might have mentioned a fantasy movie earlier. Okay, this is getting so weird that even I'm starting to have trouble ignoring it. I'm nervous now. There aren't any students that I can see, and I'm a little intimidated by the dimly lit hall. I slowly walk down the corridor. The rooms are sparse and few between, leading me to wonder just how big the rooms are. Finally, I stop in front of a large door. I take a deep breath to get, gather my courage. I push it open. A black-haired man turns to look at me. I get an intense sensation of deja vu. Are you Professor Kazama? So there you are, One Nation. Um, so sorry I'm late. It took me longer than I thought to get here. No worries. It's your first day. Have a seat. Like I said, my voice is starting to get like kind of nah and raggly and high pitched y, like weird and hard to handle. I don't like it. I do as I'm told. I scan the room quickly and find an empty seat in this strange classroom. Wait, did I just. I could swear that I just saw some familiar people in the class. But it would be rude to look around, so I just face forward. Okay, wait a minute. You just walked into a mysterious basement that appeared randomly after hovering your fingers over buttons, and then walked into an insane basement that's ridiculously large and filled with classrooms, and you see familiar faces there, and this class is mystical studies, but you think it's rude to look around. Huh. That's a little weird. Whatever. <laughs> oh, I forgot to ask if I should be in this class. Oh, well, I am curious as to what it's about. 
He didn't kick you out when you walked in. And he called you by last name. Professor Kazama walks up to me and hands me a syllabus. When I look down at it, I'm not sure if it's a joke or not. Objectives. Understand early magical history. Understand basics of advanced magical theory. Demonstrate mastery of basic magical techniques. What is this? It's a to-do list. But by then, the professor has already walked back to the front of the room. He launches into a lecture on something called the unseen world. That wasn't in parentheses or like quotations or anything, so I don't know. I have something on my keyboard. Everyone around me looks as if this is nothing new, but I keep waiting for the punchline. It's more correct. Oh, that's Professor Kazama. It's more correct to call the unseen world multiple realms. Most supernatural beings live within the hidden pocket of the human realm. But there are at least nine different realms that we know of. I'm trying to keep my focus on the lecture, but I'm kind of freaking out. What Professor Kazama is saying sounds insane, yet no one around me is reacting to it. On top of everything, there are windows in this class. Oh yeah, that's kind of weird. Uh, that's something we pro I probably should have noticed. Like, to begin with, we're in a basement. In a basement, like she says. And they're showing some kind of mountain scenery. We're not in the basement. None of this makes any sense. I feel like I have to get out of the room or I'll lose my mind. But through force of will, I managed to keep it together until the end of class. You don't seem like you ever really kind of keep it together. That's when the professor asked me to come up to the front of the room. Sorry about the link that just popped up. iCloud's always trying to get me to log in. I, no, I don't like it. One, na one nation, would you come up to the front of the class? I'd like you to provide a demonstration of your power for us. Huh? I walk up to the front slowly in a complete daze. This will be your homeroom for your magical classes. But I've been asked to see what you can do so we can better place you in the rest of your classes. Uh, I have no idea w what's going on here, but I think you have the wrong girl. You mean, you really have no idea what any of this is about? No, I don't. Well, maybe the fastest way for you to understand is through a first-hand experience. Ooh, this is going to be fun, I think. With that, Professor Kazama places one of his hands out toward me, palm up. A small sphere of light forms over it, and I can't believe what I'm seeing. Why not? Wh what? What is going on here? Genuinely scared, I take a few steps back, miss the murmurs of the class. Here goes. Kazama pulls his hand back, aiming the sphere right at me. How? Why is this happening? What did I do? What do I do? My fear, stress, and confusion with the entire situation finally come to a boiling point. The splitting headache I've had all day is just icing on the cake. All of a sudden, more than anything else, I'm pissed off. A hot feeling bubbles up inside of me, and I feel like I'm going to burn up. A painfully bright light surrounds me. I can barely understand what's happening as Kasama throws the sphere at me. Oh, serendipity of aeons. Mystic destinies in reverse. Although my screen just went very black. And it's not... Oh, there we go. I'm aware of the sensation of cold hard stone underneath me. She wakes up a lot, like, in different places. I feel extremely worn out, like I can't even move my head. But I also notice my headache is gone. For some reason, I smell smoke and I struggle to open my eyes. I see two surprising people around me. 
from the business club of all places. The one kneeling next to me is... So... And the one standing looking down at me is... Tetsuya. What are they doing here? I also see many students standing around. Farther away, I see a beautiful woman tending to Kaz K Kazuma, who is holding his hand. Sorry about this. Luce? Luce? Lucy? Let's call her Luce. We'll call her Luce, yeah. Uh, just try not to get yourself blown up again for a while, Hikaru. I think that's a girl's name. Yeah, she said it was a girl, wasn't it? A beautiful woman or something? Oh, she said it was a dude. So his name's Hikaru. Wait a minute, hold up. I just got confused. Something about the name strikes me as being right. Far more than Kazuma. Okay, that's the teacher's name. And what does she mean by blown up? Okay, and so the person tending him is a chick. That's when the previous events all come rushing back to me. I tried to sit up, but Xiao puts a hand on my shoulder. Don't overdo it. Just lie down. You must be exhausted after releasing so much power. But power Just then, Shinji walks over. He's here too? What the hell is going on? That's right, you kinda blew up the classroom. Uh, yeah, I forget, who's Hikaru? I don't know which voice Hikaru has. Yeah, sorry about that. I think that's Kazuma. I turn and see Hikaru walk up to the group. Despite what Xiao had said, I managed to push, push myself up anyway. I, I really underestimated you. Thankfully, I managed to shield everyone in time, but my hand and the classroom didn't get off so easy. I look down on his hand. It's covered in bandages. I feel distinctly horrified and so confused. I did that? You did. I know it wasn't on purpose, but that just makes you even more dangerous. I don't know how you were awakened so suddenly and with so much power. But you're too dangerous right now to others and yourself. You need to partner with someone until you can get your powers under control. What do you mean by partner with someone? I don't even understand where these supposed powers came from. Then it hits me, my mother, the ritual. Somehow, it wasn't a dream. Regardless, you need a lot more instruction than just a class every evening. You need someone who will be able to help you learn the basics and protect themselves from you. Professor, Kaz Professor Kazuma looks around at the guys surrounding me. Since these young men seem to be so interested in you, maybe you could choose one of them. Every one of them is trustworthy. I know you'll be able to rely on them. What? Seriously, Mr. K? You've got to be kidding me. I don't have time to babysit anyone. If she needs help, I don't mind. Consider it an assignment. I'll grade you on it and everything if you want. But One Nation, your powers are far too volatile to be left alone. I know it's a lot to ask, but please make your decision now. Okay. Oh, well that's chapter one. Okay. And, uh, we can move on to chapter one, but I've been playing for a good bit. I think this is a good time to stop it here. I could tell that the story is going to get, you know, interesting and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I will probably play a little bit more of this, and, uh, you know, we'll get to chapter two and see what happens next. The first one was really just an uh, intro. I mean, we didn't really get to do much anything or anything like that. So, I mean, of course, we got to go on to chapter two. Uh, why did I do that? All right, so um, I'm just going to stop this here, and I'll pick it up in the next one. 
this has been a, uh, or the first chapter of Mystic Destinies, Serendipity of Aeons, which I am playing at the moment, and, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my stupid voices and things like that, so, uh, yeah, this has been Atomic of Atomic One Nation, signing out, Atomic.